A warm welcome to Zambia in Southern Africa, where the hosts, Zambia, prepare to take on Equatorial Guinea. This is match day four of World Cup qualifying for Africa in Group B. And we're in the capital of Zambia, Lusaka, at the National Hero Stadium. This just a few days after Equatorial Guinea beat Zambia 2-0 in a somewhat controversial match between the two nations last Thursday. So Zambia will be looking to put the record straight and get back level pegging with Equatorial Guinea. Tunisia sitting pretty at the top of Group B. With three wins from three. Equatorial Guinea moved three points clear of Zambia after that victory last week. And Mauritania, they're propping up Group B, yet to score a single point. I tell you that... After our game, Mauritania take on Tunisia at 1900 hours at Greenwich Mean Time. And that's a case of bottom against top. The Zambia second from bottom on three points. They were level pegging with Equatorial Guinea before that game last Thursday. Their coach, Beston Champeji, will have had his work cut out just to re-motivate his team, get them focused, and no doubt they'll be using the manner of their defeat as motivation, trying to right the wrong, as it were, ahead of this game. And he's made a few changes into the bargain, talking through them, as and when we get the team up on your screen. Before then, we can enjoy the colour and noise coming from the crowd here at the National Hero Stadium in the capital. Saka. Full of hope and expectation. So it was the way before the game. Well, it'd be the same story come the end of the 90 minutes. Tunisia are the team to beat in this group. They have a perfect nine points out of nine. Equatorial Guinea, I can tell you, will be competing in the Africa Cup of Nations. That's in January. Unlike Zambia, who didn't qualify. So if they're looking for positives, they can concentrate on their World Cup qualifiers. Talking World Cup format, if you're not familiar with it. Ten groups of four. And it's only the group winners who advance to the next phase. And even then, that's not enough to qualify directly for Qatar 2022. Oh no. Because then the ten group winners will go into a pot. There'll be five playoff matches two legs home and away and it's those five winners who get to represent africa at the world cup finals next year and 
usually for the World Cup finals that will take place later in the year, November into December. And that's because of the extreme heat conditions in Qatar during June, July and August. That's when the World Cup is generally played. Well, here are the copper bullets. Chipolo Polo. These are the players. The home sides are itching to see. emotions in terms of facial expressions you see and a bit of it's not banter certainly exchange before the big kickoff the players hanging back just staying in the zone trying to get their focus every player goes about that in his own fashion let's go guys Let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. From the beginning, boys. Yeah. I'm sure you can understand that. Motivation. Simple, but direct. It's coming from Fashion Sakala. Not the captain, I hasten to add. But uh, every football team needs more than one captain. Different areas of the field. Official captain for Zambia is Lubambo Musonda. Look out for him, wearing the number eight shirt. Attacking midfielder. Team football fans know the drill after the two teams file onto the pitch. Here are the two national anthems. First up, following FIFA protocol the turn of the visitors and it's common courtesy as well you might think and that's followed by the national hymn or anthem of the hosts Zambia expect the noise levels to go up by quite a few decibels I'm not sure Equatorial Guinea playing all in red they're on the right of your picture Zambia the hosts Copper colored shirts to the left. And the match officials. There's referee Bakari Gassama from Gambia, as is his team. Let's see those national anthems.
You can hear the noise levels go right up out of the stadium. Cranking up the decibels. Let's take a look at the Zambia team. Straight away, coach has kept faith with the goalkeeper, Mwebya Chibwe, despite a glaring mistake for the first goal last Thursday. In come Kampamba, Boalia and Banda, replacing Daka, Chapa and Mumba. Expect them to line up 4-4-2. captains as well as the match referee Bakari Gasama from Gambia and Sue the captain for Equatorial Guinea another third earlier Musonda Ubambo Musonda the captain of the Copper Pots Equatorial Guinea, one major change at left back. Basilio is dropped. Expect uh, the Equatorial Guinea side of Juan Michep to line up in a 4 1 4 1 formation. Messeguer comes in, came on as a substitute last Thursday. Zambia kickoff against Equatorial Guinea. Match day four, World Cup qualifying for Africa on the National Hero Stadium in Lusaka. The copper bullets of Zambia keen to bounce back after that defeat to Equatorial Guinea last Thursday. And here they come. A positive start. Shot like power. Early feel of the ball. The Equatorial Guinea goalkeeper, Jesus Owano. Plays his football in Spain at uh, Deportivo Alaves. Solid header. Flags up. The captain, Nsue, getting behind the back four. Scored the goal that sealed victory for Equatorial Guinea last Thursday. Came late. 
three minutes from time. Lovely turn. Top of the shoulders and he was away. Well, ricochets off the defender. That will be our first corner kick of this game. Good defending so far from the visitors. That's two efforts they've charged down. No need to charge that one down. Skied over the crossbar. Clearances, more air than distance, more height than distance. Booze resonate around this National Hero Stadium. They're going to make their presence felt. Will it be positive? As a 12th man, perhaps. Trying to keep the crowd on side, on your side. Played by the captain, Musonda. His teammates couldn't match it. On the back foot already. There's an element of uh, a copper bullet to Zambia righting the wrong. They felt they were hard done by last Thursday. For the second goal, referee brandished a yellow card, but let play go on. Play is going on here. Captain Basonda is involved in everything at the minute involved in the thick of the action. Well, I think many neutrals were expecting a couple of bullets of Zambia to come at Equatorial Guinea and hard. It's a good pass. And that's not shabby either. Pushing the back. Referee's whistled it. A little too keen. Sakala. Blatant push in the back. You can't do that. You can, but you can't get away with it. Jesus Owano launches it long. Fence had to be at full stretch there. It's a dangerous, dangerous kick. Lost on Nsue. The referee's keen to let the game flow in these early five minutes. They're down, Chepeshi. Gets it back. Silky skills. Same possession, albeit on the back foot. And that's the problem when you make that diagonal switch pass. If it's high, the chest control has to be perfect. It's a lot easier when it comes to your feet. Easier control, easier to control with your boot than it is with the chest. I'd like this couple of step overs there. Zambia joined the lion's share of possession so far. Well, I've lost count of the number of passes that Zambia players have made.
captain is industrious as ever, Musanda. And moving the ball around sweetly, this Chanda brings it over the halfway line. Shiluya. Still too much ping on that. Equatorial Guinea. I think they'll be relieved not to be chasing the ball. Goalkeeper, Owano. He must be the player who's had most touches of the ball. Along with the captain, Sue. Visitors we just need to ride weather this storm. They should be used to storms. Their nickname is the National Thunder. They need to start generating their own electricity. Quickly taken. It was a good ploy. The opposition of ball watching. On the ball, Refari into the Zambia half by Equatorial Guinea. Heavy touch comes off pretty well, though. It's a throw in. Done and the Kreif turn. And the crowd enjoyed the first piece of skill, not the second. That's a foul. Lunging in. Certainly felt that. Jose Antonio Miranda hobbles away. The man who goes by the nickname of Josete. Free kick. Not too much movement. Comes now. Free head up. Sui was left unmarked. Zambia going for zonal defense rather than man to man marking. And it paid off. He got to the ball first. Sege taking his time. Well, within his rights. We got away with that and into trouble. Took two defenders. Still haven't cleared the danger. It's better. He's the captain, but even he can't do the job. And here comes Zambia again. It's a good period of pressure for the Copper Bullets. Change of direction. Nice stunned pass. He gets it back again. Does Chama? That's a foul, surely.
He's the heartbeat of this team. He's the captain. Expect to see him feature a lot more. Bit of verbals between the players. Campamba not rising to the bait. Very wise. Eseguer. Looking for his captain. Well, the idea was good, the direction was bad. When you're on the ropes, you do get a rare chance of a counter attack. The passing and uh, layoffs have to be spot on. Past the opening 10 minutes, both sides have had the chance to put out feelers, see what the opposition's about. They of course, know each other from the reverse game last Thursday, but uh, no two games are the same. Sue, ambitious shot, stings the palms of the goalkeeper Chibwe. He spilled it, but the shot was so far out, there was nobody following up. Have taken note of that. Got a good clean contact on the shot. Pablo Gane up the other end. End to end stuff. It's behind the defense. Chaldon the opportunity. Good save. Didn't get a clean purchase on the shot. Rather surprised him. The Kremis tells you that that was a good chance. Anguish written upon the face of Campamba. Good burst of speed by Sakala. Defense is sleeping. Well, he absolutely made a mess of it, in truth. Side-footed it, hit it into the ground, which took the sting out of the shot. And sue it. After a cagey opening, what, five, ten minutes? The game's opening up now. Poor cheeky nutmeg. Now the shot's on goal! Not far off. From outside the penalty area, it was always dipping. Josete that time. It was Pablo Gane before. But I think Josete saw Hachibwe spilled the earlier shot from his teammate, Gane. Fancied his chances. That's what I mean by just uh, keeping an eye, an overview on what's going on in a game of football. He gets the foul. Some might say he gets lucky. He certainly would. Siafa. Having dominated, having enjoyed a purple patch, you might say. Balance of power has shifted to the visitors. Here they come again. Meseguer. Oh. Referee gets in the way, but waves play on. Carlos is in the cross, it wasn't a shot, it was more of a cross. Short from his captain. Fall back as well. So that's King a lot of his captain. Two great examples of chess control. Oh, yes. That is the first yellow card of the game. He protests. Pointless foul. Really was no need for it at all. And Josete. Jose Antonio Miranda Volaccio, to give him his full name, but uh, I like the nickname Josete. 
Now that was just needless. It wasn't in a danger area at all. And now we'll have to watch his step for the remainder of the game. And he may well find himself being substituted later on in the game. Coaches are conscious. The players on yellow cards. Walking that fine line. The coach wants his team reduced to 10 men. Side of the left boot. Comes to nothing. That time. Space it's in the middle of the park. Good burst of speed by Sakala. He's got behind the defence once already. That was the Campanda effort. Took the visitors' defence by surprise. Back to Chiluya. Quickly take. All over the top. Haven't seen too many of those. Not from Zambia, at any rate. Do play at speed, which is easy on the eye. Nicely done. That's a, a good call in defence. Defender, goalkeeper, combining well. A one up. His distribution is good too. They say again, needs help. There's a mistake. All tidied up. Not for long. of a shot, instead of slide rule, pass, and that just goes over the bar. Good opening by Zambia. Carving up the Equatorial Guinea defence. Shot fell to Sakala. He's been the most dangerous of the attackers so far. Perfect slide rule pass by Chama. Flummox the defenders. Saul Coco. Stranded. Second good chance of the game for Zambia. Great challenge. Gets the free kick. Would have been clattered. Pablo Gennett. Came on as a substitute on Thursday. Okay, because he's about to take the free kick, is Gennett. Centre forward, Siafa makes his move, checks, and that free kick misses absolutely everybody. 
can see what he was trying to do. Just whip the ball around the defence, but uh, needs to work on that. Long ball, well read by Meseguer. Zambia come again. Ref played the advantage, good decision. Risky pass back. Gets away with it though, does Carlos. Putting pressure on his goalkeeper, is the upshot. header good angled header not sure he meant it but uh, given the benefit of the doubt a few boos coming from the home fans finally getting restless We're approaching the halfway mark of these 45 minutes no goal so far As was the case on Thursday. Although, in fact, uh, I should mention is that by this stage of the game, Zambia had been reduced to 10 men. On Thursday, Mumba was shown a direct red card. An ugly challenge. That in comparison is tame from Chepeshi. Nicely done by Pepe. Well won by Siafa. Strong presence up front to centre forward. Yeah, the captain, Sue, lost control of that. And as a result, his team are on the back foot. And that's what happens when you lose your concentration. Quickly taken. Campamba. Good fighting spirit by the captain Musonda. Constantly on the move. Campamba. So he's put that bad miss behind him. He needs to for his team's sake. One on one here. Here comes the defense to the rescue. Goalkeeper Owano appreciated that. Chama was clean through. Time a one up. -oh. Conditions cooler now in the evening. We stick here earlier on in the day. Zambia coach, Beston Champeshi. Animated on the sidelines in his technical area. Another poor free kick from the visitors. It's a lot better. Now the intent was good. Sui applauding. When you've got a flat back four. Diagonal balls played quickly. Always a good tactic. Stretches the defense for one, especially if the full backs have been pushing up. It's very much the modern game. Full backs now are effectively wing backs. That's why a lot of teams play three at the back. Not the case with these two outfits.
Chiluya. It's a good example. The left back. Well advanced. Here he is again. That's a good tackle. Zambia winning the 50 50s again. The coach will like that. That's a perfectly weighted pass. Space here on the right. Good deep cross. Goalkeeper gets a single punch, single hand. Sees the corner though. And Pamba. Ready to take the corner kick quickly. Not so quickly. Teammates haven't come up for it yet. He went for Chanda and then Wape. Comes in. A bit of space here. Charge down. Shipeshi can get it back. Makes a switch. It slipped at the wrong moment. A little bit of space. Flag stays down. Lots of space into the penalty area. Good ball in. It was that man. Campamba. Look at the amount of space here for Masonda. So much. Ran into the penalty area. The end. He got his head to it, but it came in so hard and so low, couldn't control it. And helped by two defenders. Completely missed that. Ichanda. Tangling with Siafa. Siafa get, got clouted on the back of his head. Wape giving his teammate instructions. Mixed emotions from those fans. Siaf is up. Midfielders, Chama and Banda bring the ball over the halfway line. Decent ball in, a little bit too much on it. Needed a bit of backspin to bring the ball down. Not everybody could do that. Alexander has not stopped running during these opening 30 minutes. No goals here at the National Hero Stadium. But if Zambia were to break the deadlock, whoever does score, I'm sure, would earn instant hero status. Keep it in play. Yes, he can. Well played. But that often happens too. Made such an effort. Lost control of it. But it's done very well to win the corner kick. And his previous corners have come from the other side. What can Masonda do here? It's a delivery. What a space. Well, he had the space and the time. Maybe too much of both. Less said about Banda's effort, the better. Banda, by the way, the defensive midfielder. He's come in for Mumba. He was sent off in that game last week. Risonda getting the head up. Schoolboy mistake. He made of leaning back. 
to get over the ball. A little bit of magic spray. Not sure how much good he's doing on the outside of the shirt. Just a special penetrating powers. Now the man suffering is the central defender Mwape. Let's keep an eye on him. Hopefully he recovers from that knock. Tandy Mwape plays his football at uh, TP Mazembe. And here comes Zambia again. Oh, ball watching. Another schoolboy mistake. That was Sakala. Out of character for him, he's had a good half so far. Don't get too much time at this level. Needs help. Pesci. game's gone flat on us that happens during the course of 90 minutes lots of peaks and troughs in any game of football that's better well the idea was good that's good to see Chama giving the thumbs up only a simple gesture goes down well though shows that a team have got a good spirit amongst them Wet, forming on the brow of the left back, Messeguer. Would have been even more sweat. And that led to a goal. As it is, it's another corner kick. And the last one from Masonda was good, but this has been taken quickly. And that'll be another corner kick. And uh, something tells me this one won't be taken short. Defended. Bandu was hovering on the edge of the penalty area. No teammates ready for the pass. Slight flaw in Equatorial Guinea's match game so far. Zambia look, look to support each other more than the visitors. Maybe that's why Messeguer resorts to the long throw. Look straight back to... Uh, where it started, lovely skills, good shot, and that's an equally good save. Good football, Sakala, got his shooting boots on again. Good power, it was on target. Great control with the head. Well, he showed off all his attributes there. Controls with the head there. Right foot, pulls a trigger with the left. Goalkeeper, a one on making it look easy. It's been impressive up to now. The game management, an underrated part of football. Here, yep, Zambia need to be patient. As the visitors need to keep their focus in defence. That's turning into a fine duel down the right wing. Musonda against Messeguer. And Sue does well. Kampamba. 
That's nicely done. That's better played by Equatorial Guinea. Crowd really acting as a 12th pan. Booing the visitors just for uh, getting over the halfway line. Fede Bicoro. Once again, stinging the palms of the goalkeeper Chibwe. He once again fails to hold. I wonder if the visitors have noted these slip ups. Chibwe made a bad mistake for the opening goal in the game last Thursday. But as I said, his coach, best on Champesi, has kept faith with him. Chanda. Very close to each other there. It's more like it. That's the support I was talking about. Sonder against Messeguer. Messeguer coming out on top that time. A bit of space here for the captain. He doesn't get the ball. Sakala gives it to Chama instead. Now here's Messonda. Burst of speed, buys him space, good header down, good shot off the post, good save. Shot ricocheted off the post, hit the goalkeeper before going in. In fact, I wonder if the goalkeeper knew too much about it. His arms in the air, thought he might be injured, springs back to his feet, needs must. Good challenge. Referee disagrees. What, me? Yes, you, Senor Josete. There's Misona's pass. Excellent assist header. Lovely shot. I don't think he did know too much about it. Campamba with the header back. And the shot by the Walia. Come the copper bullets again. The tails are up. Want to take it quickly. Good ball. Can he keep it in? Got to be careful as well. As soon as he leaves the green field. Do himself a damage with studs on that type of surface. It's like being on ice, being on that. Uh, it's an athletic track, so it's some kind of synthetic material. Five minutes till the halftime whistle. That's if we don't get additional time. We call any breaks at all to the game, any stoppages. I'm expecting too much. Perfectly poised this game. Zambia enjoyed more of the ball, more possession, and the cleaner, clearer cut chances as well. But they've come up against a rock in the form of Jesus Owono. He's not in a hurry. The Walter point would be a good result for Equatorial Guinea. In the great scheme of things, it wouldn't be enough. Tunisia, the top of this group, with a maximum nine points from nine. It's a foul. Sete. And 
later on this evening, they come up against the team who were rock bottom in Madagascar. And nothing's a foregone conclusion in football, but the smart money is on Tunisia to take all three points and complete the double against the Madagascan side. It is away from home. It's uh, quite some distance. The trip. So, the onus is on both sides to take three points here. Good ball in, too close to the goalkeeper in the end. Ganek with a free kick. Sonder. Can he sustain these energy levels into the second half, I wonder? Sakala, he's got support. Sonda, lovely turn, joystick control, plays it back, here's a chance, good effort, good save, not played, Chammer again, and the difference between the goalkeepers is that Jesus Owono, he holds on to absolutely everything that the copper bullet shoots at him. Chammer, a considerable threat on the edge of the penalty area. He forced, uh, well, I was going to say the save, but his initial shot from the corner kick came off the post. Here they come again. That's good battling in defence. As cool as you like, this goalkeeper Owano. If he was under pressure, he certainly didn't let it show there. But completely unfazed. Get lucky. Zambi up. Flag stays down. A little bit too much on that. I think Campamba was expecting the ball there. Sakal is not best pleased. 90 seconds left of this first half. Equatorial Guinea will be looking forward to half time more than their host Zambia. Is that trademark burst of speed from Musonda? Great to watch. Oh, that wasn't too bad either. Chamat showing a little bit too much here, but he's really come into the game in these last 20 minutes as Chamat. And that's what I mean by the visitors looking forward to half time. A one up using up every centimeter of his goal map there to count down the clock. have one minute of additional time. Unsurprising. It's been a pretty clean game so far. That clocks into the red. Ziafer had come back to help out at the centre forward. And this could well be the last chance of the half. It's for Equatorial Guinea. Will they count down the clock or will they send their big players up? Looks more like the first option. Ziafer. Chasing down the ball. And there is the half time whistle. Well, it's been a very competitive 45 minutes. No goals. On is even for the meantime.
Zambia dominated possession, had far more chances than Equatorial Guinea, but had come up against a goalkeeper really in form, Jesus Owano, playing out of his skin. So they'll go in now. Coach Juan Micha give him the pep talk, as indeed will best on Champezi for Zambia. You join us 15 minutes for the second half of what is a perfectly poised World Cup qualifier here between Zambia and Equatorial Guinea.
Welcome back to this World Cup qualifier between Zambia and Equatorial Guinea. Zambia, first team back out on the pitch. Pressure's on them. I'd like to have been a fly on the wall of their changing room at halftime. I'd be surprised if their coach read them the riot act. Best on Champesi, certainly been animated in the first half. It's Cepeshi. Right back. Perhaps expect him to get further forward in the second half. Pick up the visitors. They'll be pleased that uh, they managed to not concede, given Zambia's copper bullets have had by far more clear cut chances. But both teams need a win with group leaders Tunisia sitting pretty. Nine points, three wins from three. Equatorial Guinea kick off the second half of this World Cup qualifier in Zambia against the hosts, the Copper Bullets. Tunisia take on Mauritania, the final game of match day four. It's this evening. Mauritania, rock bottom without a single point to their name, so Tunisia are favourites to make it four wins from four. And that puts more pressure on both these teams. Both need a win to stay within touching distance of Tunisia and hope to get some glory, some joy from Tunisia next month in November when we'll play the fifth and sixth games. Tunisia beat Equatorial Guinea 3-0. That was at home in North Africa. And they went on better by beating Zambia 2-0 right here. So nobody can say they don't deserve to be top of this group. Equatorial Guinea to have a crack at uh, Tunisia though. Home soil. Captain Clay. That's a good throw in. It's a good position rather, I should say. Look at this. Campamba. Using all the width of that athletic strike to launch a long throw. Good delivery. Victoria Guinea got there first. That's clever play by the captain and Sue. Just getting in the face of the referee's assistant. I actually think he was right anyway. Did come off Zambia player. I fully expect Zambia to take the game to the visitors. Pretty much as they did in the first half. But the danger, of course, is to get used to their field position start to throw extra players up front leaving themselves exposed to a counter <laughs> 
right under the referee's nose. Sakala. Left back Nesegger gets a quick talking to. Not dirty. Just uh, putting his knee to the leg of his marker. Well, he was marking. Free kick, it's some distance out, over 30 metres. Well, he won't go for goal, but he does. And maybe he shouldn't have. Bold ambition shown by Campamba. Be a bit too clever there, and he was caught out with Chanda. Unselfish, it might yet fall for Zambia. Cosette, and it'd be too clever by half on that left byline. Every Equatorial Guinea player behind the ball, defending in their own half. That's a challenge. Well, you can see what they were trying to do, stretch that back four. But the passing has got to be very precise and accurate, which that wasn't. Well, I fully expect to see Zambia's substitutes make an appearance sooner than later. Best and Champesi knows he's got to change something. What well kept in? Can you do it again? Yes. <laughs> Excellent control. Fans appreciated that. the ball again trying to get behind the left back in that case the left-sided central defender Saul Coco Manny got the opening goal in the corresponding fixture between these sides last Thursday and anything Zambia substitutes can do so can Equatorial Guineas First mistakes, Jesus Owano has made all game. I said earlier, he's with the Spanish side Deportivo Alaves, and yet he's yet to make a first team appearance for the Northern Spanish outfit. That's a decent ball in. Flags up. Well, that didn't come to anything. Just going to keep plugging away at the copper bullets, asking questions of this defense. Once again, we've had this discussion before, but uh, that was a very, very tight decision. And the problem, as ever, is that uh, the referee, more to the point, his assistant, makes a snap decision in a split second with a naked eye. Put simply, make the decision of where the players are when the pass arrives at its intended target but the rule is is a player offside at the moment the pass is made and yet without the help of technology it's virtually impossible for the linesman to be 100% accurate
it is not an exact science. This man got a lonely shift up front. It's the Afa. Going about it, honestly. But he's planning a lonely furrow. It's a congested midfield. Space is at a premium. This is where more space usually is. Yeah, good decision. Ball came off an Equatorial Guinea shirt. But there was an infringement. Sakala. There you go. That's the push. That's the infringement on Messeguer. He points it out straight away. Walking pace here, Equatorial Guinea. It's the effort as well. Feeding Pepin all over the top, and the flag stayed down. I think he'd given up the ghost and Sue. Now a chance one on one. And that goalkeeper, nothing will phase Jesus Owono. From one goalkeeper to the other, it's an easy take for Chibwe. Good distribution. Good composure. And a good burst of speed from the captain, Musonda. That's an excellent header by Saul Coco. Fortune favours the brave. And we have a counter attack. Flag stays down. It was one on one. Make that three on six. Well, they're riding their luck here, are the visitors. That's three jewels they've won. Not without a slice of lady luck. Fortune favours the brave. So the saying goes, maybe that's a good omen for the visitors. The National Thunder, I've seen too much thunder from them. Sonder cuts inside onto his right boot, blazed over the bar. Well, there is a buzz every time he gets the ball, the captain. Hard to believe he plays his domestic football. In Scandinavia for a team called Horsens. And he seems to have the lungs and energy of a horse. Pedigree player. Plays in Denmark. Just wonder. No disrespect to the Danish league, but if there are teams from the so called bigger leagues. Watching this Africa World Cup qualifier. Trailing hand. I'm not sure the pat on the head will do much. He's... Now that's one of those moments you understand what Masonda is trying to do. He realizes he's in the wrong. He wants to apologize, but. Uh, the, the little pat on the forehead and the play, with the players writhing in agony, it might just be perceived as patronising. I'm sure that wasn't his intention. That's the way the Equatorial Guinea, some of their players, defenders, seem to take it. Poor control. Sign of fatigue, maybe.
to Carlos. He lost control of the ball. Nicely done by Insue. The first time. Kampamba. A good challenge by Carlos. It looks like a substitution about to be made. Yes, indeed, it is, and it is Zambia who make the first switch of the game. On comes number 14. See, he was making, he was making way for him. Sonda appended, advantage played by the referee. It shored up that left channel, in the Equatorial Guinea defence. Substitute. Chalufia is lurking. Good ball. Still danger. Will it fall nicely? No. Appeals the handball. I get the corner kick. Well, nearly an inspired substitution by Zambia. Edward Chalufia in the thick of the action. Straight away. Here he is. Kept his cool. It's a great ball in by Chaluya. Falls nicely to Chepeshi. First time in the game that we've seen the Equatorial Guinea goalkeeper Jesus Owano feel the pressure. He's been under pressure before, but he's come through it very well. He's confirmation of that substitution. Off goes number seven, and comes number 14. So that's we'll see of Campamba. Had an honest game. I think that one chance in the first half, and his shot was well saved. It's his uh, most important contribution. Can his replacement fare any better? And by that I mean, can he break the deadlock? Because that is what Zambia need to do. Possession, it's all well and good, but if you don't do anything with it, well, what's the point, you might say? The point is all they'll come away with here if the scoreline stays the same. That's what fresh legs bring. Bit of impetus and energy, that's a great interception. Messeguer just sticking his left boot at. They're pretty well drilled. This defence of Equatorial Guinea, quickly taken by Chama. Space opening up. Nice give and goes. Burst of speed, pulls a trigger. Good save. He's got a fine sense of positioning, says Jesus Owano. OK, that time he didn't hold it, but the first time in the game. With a shot packed to punch. Just stung his palms. Substitution for Zambia has worked well. So well, makes you wonder if they'll try another.
if it run with that. Deep ball out. And the good news for Zambian fans is that the defence is keeping their shape. Not getting key deep, rushing upfield. That's a lovely turn. Play waved on. Could this be it? It is it. 1 0. Zambia make the breakthrough. That man, Sakala. Well, Equatorial Guinea will argue their player stopped playing. He collapsed to the ground. Celebrations from the bench. Best on Chepezi, looking very composed, you have to say. Well, Sakala, he played to the whistle. Only one thing on his mind, but it would like to see it again. Just to see what happened, and here it is. There's the burst of speed. Great cut inside, absolutely foxing the fullback, Carlos. Didn't he take it well? It was Saul Coco, in fact. He was left lying on his backside. Superb finish, 1-0 to Zambia. And just look and listen to the fans in the stadium. So how will Equatorial Guinea react to that? They've got to commit themselves forward now. As it stands, Zambia will go level on points with Equatorial Guinea. Seven points apiece. Straight on the attack, come the visitors. Their spaces will open up in Equatorial Guinea's defence. Hasty clearance. Well, there have been no protests from the Equatorial Guinea team after that goal. Thought there might have been. As I said, I assumed the defender went down because of uh, a trailing hand by Sakala. Here he is again. Couldn't keep that in play, though. Equatorial Guinea with just over 20 minutes to get back into the game. Always a risky strategy. Playing deep, sitting back, inviting Zambia to come on to them. It's backfired. The defence had been good. And the goalkeeper. But what now? They'll have to strike a balance between Moving upfield, taking a few more risks. Can't remember the last effort on goal, to be honest. And it's interesting to see that uh, Siafa has been joined by Pablo Gannett up front. Gannett's moved up from midfield. Well, they've got to try something. If Tunisia were to win in Mauritania this evening, they'll move on to a perfect 12 points from 12, which would put them five points ahead of both these two teams, if the scoreline stays the same. It's five points advantage with just two games to come. In November. Well, that's a pretty harsh. 
Yeah, there was a little bit of seconds from Equatorial Guinea there. He would say that he was giving as good as he got with Fede Picoro. That's his position, just sitting in front of the back four. The visitors 4-1, 4-1 formation. Lovely dummy. By Musonda. Well, I did ask if he could sustain his energy levels from the first half. Hasn't been the case. But if the score stays the same, maybe he won't have to. This is a good press by Equatorial Guinea. That's why teams press. Forcing Zambia into a hasty clearance. Sulcoco, spotlight on him. He's defender, he was skinned by Sekala. And here they come again, Meseguer, standing tall. Poor clearance by Vicoro. Gets away with it, quickly taken, and Sue. Zambian player on the floor in the penalty area. Still. Well, he's calling for assistance. Referee spotted him. Play stops. Considerable pain as well. After that challenge. Well, it's London's initial challenge. He makes the foul. I think it's the jolt when he lands on his left foot. Now, is that a smile or a grimace? Or well, the latter, I think. Good use of the downtime by the Zambia bench. Sakala goes off, still grimacing. Will he come back on? That's the question. At one point, it looked as if he was clutching his groin. And that's not something you could just run off like a knock to a bone. And to it. That's his trademark turn. But they were alive to it. Route one. Brilliant play by the substitute, Chalufia. Not his intention. He was put off by the attentions of the defender. But he has made an impact since coming on as a sub. More and more space opening up now in midfield. Ball to Insuwe was rather telegraphed. The space was in the middle. Not on the wing. Getting behind the lines. New goal kick. Does well. Now they're chasing the game now, and they're not used to it. It's Equatorial Guinea. If the score stays the same, I'm sure some Zambian fans and maybe even players will argue that it's poetic justice. They played most of the corresponding game against Equatorial Guinea, reduced to 10 men. No injustice about that. It was a straight red card for Mumba. A defensive midfielder, 10-year-old showing his ex inexperience. Oh, 
A little bit of afters there. Frustration from Messeger, the left back. He's getting further forward as well. It's part of the new risk strategy they've got to adopt. Makes sense. You've got two central defenders. You've got Picoro. He plays immediately in front of the central defense, so why not push up the fullbacks? The very highest levels of football. The fullback, you can't attack, and he doesn't make the first 11. Very rarely, anyway. He doesn't make his national team at the top level, that's for sure. Sonder constantly hungry for the ball and now they play keep ball Zambia that goal by Fashion Sakala the difference between these two still no substitutes on for Equatorial Guinea how long will that last? No press, it's just Siafa, not by himself. So he's moved over to the right side of midfield. I wonder if that will be permanent. So he's actually without a club at the minute. Left the Cypriot side, Apoel Nicosia, in July. Well travelled. Played in England for Middlesbrough, Birmingham, in Spain, at uh, Real Mallorca. He was the hero. He scored a goal against Tanzania in March, which sent uh, Equatorial Guinea. The next January's Africa Cup of Nations. Haven't played for his nation for a while until match day three on Thursday. Where he scored a late goal, a controversial late goal. Now here comes those substitutions for the visitors. Coming off is Josete, replaced by Rodriguez. And the other card was Josete, picked up early on. Like a lot of his team, he's had a quiet match since then. Coming on is Spoiler Sam. And three substitutions being made by Zambia. Three more. They made one already. Best on Champesi. Managing his team, managing his squad, I should say. So off comes Banda. Central midfielder. Still cheering his team on. And they get to come on. Play's about to go on.
There's pressure for Zambia to make those substitutions. Then Equatorial Guinea, that's for sure. Ten minutes to go. It's a great pass. Low, perfectly weighted. Decent ball in. Sailed over the head of everybody, in fact. At least the thoroughbred. He plays at Horstens, finally running out of steam. Rissonde, he's my man of the match so far. Now we might have the substitutions. Indeed, we will. Off goes Banda, replaced by Kapumbu. That's a strong challenge by Ganetta. That's excellent play behind the fullback. Came to nothing. Did it take a deflection? Indeed, it did. It's a corner kick. And I think players realize that substitutions are imminent. This is the fullback, Carlos. Great burst of speed. And that. Came off a fellow fullback in Chanda, central defender, in fact. That is the third substitution for the visitors. Off comes Siafa, the lone forward, replaced by Obama Onda. Can he make a name for himself? from this corner kick. Decent delivery, good header, and he can! 1-1! Equatorial Guinea back in the game. Oh, yes. Oh, they're delighted. It's Fede Bikoro. Well, the defence of Zambia just went to sleep. Unmarked. Tom Marks for the header. Powerful on target. Doubt very much whether the goalkeeper Chibwe even saw it. Good delivery as well by the substitute Bouli Lassam. Well, he loses his marker. His marker must be kicking himself. Little shimmy by Bikora. Lost his marker. And then he had a free reign on goal. Well, he didn't come from a substitute, but fresh legs always make a difference. Eight minutes left to play. Shirt tugging. Yellow card. Cynical foul. Taking one for the team, they call it. Bakari Gassana spotted that. And that's the, that's the substitute. He had a lively couple of minutes. Assist with a goal from the corner and a yellow card. Decent delivery in, a little bit deep perhaps. Too deep for his teammates. This puts Equatorial Guinea on eight points. Well, Zambia are up to five. I say up virtually. Until a couple of minutes ago, they were on seven. In the margins at the top end of world football. And all the while, watching this, perhaps in the changing room in Mauritania, Tunisia must be rubbing their hands in glee. Obama Ronda. Scooped away. And the 
rattle to Zambia. So they challenge. Not spotted by the ref. Lovely turn. And the run. It's more like it. Old school defending by Saul Coco. Zambia's turn. It's ahead of the defender. That's a lovely touch. And no wonder they're applauding from the sidelines. Be careful. That's a foul. The striker. That was perfectly done. And that wasn't too bad either. The goal scorer, Freddy Bicora. Flags up. The captain, Nsue. Scored around this time in Thursday's game. Lightning not striking twice for the National Thunder. It's Equatorial Guinea's nickname. It was a thundering header, which has got my back level here. We've got two minutes additional time added on at the end of the first half. Expect the same again, maybe more. Certainly time for Zambia. The balance of play. Some would say they deserve the victory. But uh, what does that mean? Only thing that counts is the final score. Putting the ball in the back of the net. Here's a counter. Good delivery in. Free head. Oh, and Suet. Golden opportunity. Couldn't direct his head up. Yes, he was closely marked. Looks up to the skies. Great delivery again. Well, the Zambian defence just about doing enough to put Nsui off his stride. Wouldn't be surprised if he'd be dreaming of where the ball was going. Exactly where in the back of the net. Best laid plans, go with straight and all that. Business end this match. It's not over yet, far from it. That's a good sign from Equatorial Guinea's captain in Suwe. Missed, messed up his control. As you can see, his passion, really angry with himself. And the substitution. This double substitution for the visitors. 21 and 19 coming on. And it is a captain in Suwe. It goes off. Accompanied by Pablo Gannett. Gannett replaced by Balboa Bandera. Zambia, they're rotating as well. Lavo Asue. Second substitute coming on in that recent change, replacing the captain in Sue. Who gets the captain's on that? Well, at this late stage in the game, I think every player has to stand up and be a captain, lead by example. Equatorial Guinea, they've used to pull five of their subs. Head up. Been solid in defense. It's again. That's clever play. Keeping it simple. 
Pair again. Clever play by Equatorial Guinea. Twice now. And just using a dummy. Buys them time. Means they keep hold of the ball. And that too. It's clever. A little burst of speed. Inviting the challenge. Which comes in. Frustration. Zambia substitute is Moses Fury. We're into the closing seconds of a regulation time, the 90 minutes. Fans, no doubt, look at the electronic board announcing stoppage time. Oh, that's unlucky. And that's the way the rubber the green goes sometimes. Moses' first touch. Ball came off his back heel. Four minutes. That's becoming almost a, a staple amount of time. Confirmation Moses' theory on the Chammer. This period. Well, they need a miracle. To Zambia. Can Moses Piri provide it? Three minutes of stoppage time. There have been instances when you get stoppages during additional time, but it's not always added on by the referee. Lavo Asue, one of the five substitutes on for Equatorial Guinea, the most recent, in fact. And this will be a memorable point. And as it stands, Tunisia will be two points, or rather one point ahead of Equatorial Guinea before their match day four kicks off. Stranger things have happened in football. Let's not underestimate uh, Mauritania. However, if Tunisia were to make it four wins from four, that will give them a handsome four-point lead over Equatorial Guinea. But both Zambia and Equatorial Guinea have yet to play second game against Tunisia they'll be chomping at the bit a sense of urgency to stay on the road to Qatar might help them Zambia need help here the game management the visitors Equatorial Guinea has been excellent. They kept the composure even after conceding the opening goal of the game. He'd to keep the ball in play there and to get goal side of his marker there. So they still believe Zambia. And that was unfortunate. He had no options on his right side, so he went back to his left. But by that time, his teammate had moved on. And you can see it. Kapombu. Gone back into defence. Strange, really. And his team desperately need a winner. to the closing seconds now all eyes on the referee and there is a whistle but not the final whistle last chance saloon for Zambia they simply have to pump this ball upfield Chibwe obliges 
But it's too late. There is the final whistle. Zambia have been held by Equatorial Guinea. Final score here, 1-1. And it's the Equatorial Guinea team who are celebrating that as if they're taking all three points. Fashion Zakala gave the copper bullet to Zambia the lead after the hour mark, but it was short-lived. Just 17 minutes later, Fede Bikora, the man in your picture there, stepped up from the corner kick to head home. A bullet header of an equaliser, making the final score 1-1. As the captain, Nsue, had a good game. Disappointment for Zambia. Dominated the first half, created unteen clear-cut chances, but came up against the goalkeeper in Jesus Owanu. He was inspired. Jesus saved absolutely everything Zambia threw at him. And the upshot was, they believed, even when Zambia got the opening goal, they never stopped believing. Juan Mitch's men with a superb performance. And that takes them to the top of this Group B. Next up for Zambia. Keynes against Mauritania and the group leaders, Tunisia. And likewise for Equatorial Guinea. Got to feel sorry for them. As I said, Equatorial Guinea, I think, well, you feel pretty much how we felt last Thursday. The goalkeeper doesn't look too disappointed, Chibwe, just uh, joining in some photo opportunities. Bring you the group standings after this match. All of this in the knowledge that Tunisia have yet to play their fourth game. So here you have it, Tunisia. One game fewer than Equatorial Guinea and Zambia, but they're top on nine points. Equatorial Guinea. Zambia, three points to the difference. Mauritania, rock bottom. Hope you've enjoyed the game with me, Tony Jeffers. Join us again for more football. Thank you. Good night.